Okay, I'm hopping on here last second. My son is about to wrestle his first match, my 13-year-old boy. About to have a wrestling match here in just a minute. So I wanted to pop in with everybody and let you know that tomorrow, tomorrow we're doing our live Q&A question and answer for everybody who signed up for the Mark course with Dr. James D. Tabor. Reading Mark for Mark has really made me really go, what the heck is Matthew and Luke doing? It's definitely different, and you have to check out the course in order to really get that. So this is a shameless plug slash live letting you know, go subscribe to the Scholarly Courses. Um, James Tabor is tomorrow, so if you sign up today, you'll have the opportunity to join us live on a Zoom call. Um, I hope everybody's doing well. Let me share some of this information. A lot of you may not even be able to pop in. This is the course. You guys, when you sign up, you'll you'll actually see all of this information here with maps and stuff. And to give you an idea for those who are wondering, how is it? How does it look? Um, so um, the quality is on point 4K. He takes you deep and his uh, students say that this is one of their favorite courses that they've taken with Dr. Tabor over the years. We're now doing it on the internet. Like you're sitting from your computer screen, being able to help support the scholars that you love and uh, learn the stuff that you want to learn, especially if you're trying to combat some of the silly ideas that are out there. Like you're going to go to hell if you don't believe that kind of nonsense. Uh, you really have some good, sufficient evidence to support you on like, should we trust what we're reading here to be literally true? Um, let me go to lecture two. Lecture two. Here we are. Lecture two. Again, high, high quality 4K. Dr. Tabor is an amazing scholar. So I'm giving you guys a shout out here, a little plug. You can go sign up now. Early bird special still out right now. Eventually we're going to change that, but um, we're doing the Q&A tomorrow. So for those who are tuning in, make sure you go check it out. And the website that we're going to have many other courses, I have to let you know about this. Creating Jesus, James Tabor. We have, let's go to our courses here. Where are they? Academic online courses. My computer being slow. Okay. My computer doesn't want to open the page. No good. Okay. That did not work out. View all courses. Here we go. So now we're here. We have two other ones. I don't think many people realize how, um, how really well edited some of these courses are. You don't find those out there. They're not like looking as clean and as nice. M. David Litwa, Delcy Allison Jr. But tomorrow, James Tabor going live again. Um, I am working, coming back to me, I'm working on editing right now for those, I'm giving you kind of like a, a window. For those who are tuning in, I know this is not a schmancy, pantsy, hardcore video. You're getting behind the scenes real quick with me. So D David, or David, um, uh, Dennis McDonald is, you know, doing a course around this book, his mimesis, all of his work, connecting the gospels and acts to Greek literature is in this book, right? Well, we have done an 18 lecture series, of course, right? Uh, a course that's 18 lectures long. Diving into those parallels. I have edited up to number seven and there's some really good edit editing going on there. I have, what is this, 11 more? I've got 11 more videos to edit. That course will be ready. I've got one with Richard Carrier that will be ready to go out. I have two courses that I'm about to do with Robin Faith Walsh that are about to go out. I got to edit all this stuff. And then uh, I've got so much more coming. It's not even funny. Like we're bringing the ivory tower to the YouTube world where anyone can take these courses as if they are in the university themselves. You can't beat it. Anyway, um, this is what I wanted to do is shamelessly plug, putting there at the pin top, sign up. I hope to see you tomorrow. I'll be co-hosting it with Dr. Tabor, taking questions from people who sign up for the course. The link will get emailed to you if you signed up for the course, so don't worry. And um, I really do hope to see you all there because this journey of learning, it's like, I've said it before, for those who watch me, if you've ever watched magicians like David Blaine and you wonder how they did the trick, how is this happening? What's going on? That's how I feel learning about this material. You realize what's going on behind the curtain. 
not what they just tell you literally. Oh, no, he really uh, levitated. He really ascended into heaven on a cloud. Really? I'm not buying it. And I'll tell you why I'm not buying it. I see other people ascending on clouds. Did they ascend on clouds? Well, our, our evidence is better than their evidence. Dude, our guy and his nation really ruled the world at the time. Anyway, that, that's Romulus. We're starting to get into the idea of the Roman, uh, the Roman uh, Empire ruling the world and the Caesars literally modeling themselves after that. Like, cut it out. But if you're if you're someone like me, you don't buy it. Give yourself reasons to be able to draw those conclusions, because that's what the scholarship will help you do. We're not uh, interested in apologetic scholarship. We're interested in critical scholarship that isn't going to favor this over all the rest of the literature in the world and say ours is true and yours is wrong. Seth, thank you for uh, joining me today. Christina, emergency uh, emergency remedial help help or sorry remedial truth. Sorry, thank you. Christina again says I am really digging the recent focus on Mark. So often ignored. No joke. No joke. The, the ending. It's it's just what a wild wild gospel. I imagine I'll be wanting to do a video on my own personal, what I've walked away from this course uh, learning after the Q&A tomorrow at some point. And Dr. Tabor told me, he said, D, if things go well and we have way more questions than we can take and we have people signing up, then we'll follow up down the road and potentially do another Mark Q&A. But let me drop another one on you. He wants to do a gospel of Matthew, a gospel of Luke, Acts, and he wants to do one on John. So you're going to want to stay tuned. And it's not just Dr. Tabor that wants to do this. Like all of our favorite academics are going to be doing that. And another thing. So Richard C. Miller, nobody's done interviews with the guy, not even interviews. I'm hoping to not only do interviews, but if you haven't read this book, I highly recommend it. I want to do a course surrounding resurrection and reception in early Christianity. In this book, he pretty much flat out says the early church father Christians equated Christianity in at least analogous terms to the sons of Zeus, Dionysus, uh, Asclepius, uh, Hercules, and their beliefs and their myths, and the Caesars and their apotheosis and all that to Jesus. And he goes and shows you that these are legends and tropes. And he he goes all the way back to Paul. That's why my interview, which hasn't been released yet with Delcy Allison Jr., I ask him about Paul. Is it likely or possible that the 1 Corinthians 15 creed that we talk about as a creed with I witness this and that is actually a legendary trope? Dr. Miller thinks, yeah. He said, I admit that that's the hardest place to identify it as a trope because many people have read it a certain way for so long, but he thinks there's a legendary trope there did two courses or lecture series with wonderful Robin Faith Walsh. You don't want to miss. I'm just excited. And I also wanted to get everybody on here to just say, go Caleb. My son is wrestling here at one, which is just a little while from now. So I'm excited to go see his first wrestling match, um, which is like, for those who don't know, it's not like WWE. This is like high school Greco-Roman wrestling and stuff. Cheryl in the house. I'm studying this now. Dr. Tabor is a, an excellent teacher. I'm loving it. I loved it too. I, I filmed it, right? But I watched it as editing editing the videos too. And I was like, man, there's some depth. He lets you have a little room to wiggle too, right? Melody Joy in the house. My favorite daily knowledge and learning session. So relaxing. All praise, myth, vision. Blessings be upon you. Robert, good to see you in the chat, Robert. And the flying spaghetti monster. Native atheist, thanks, Derek. You're following the evidence where it leads. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I think that you're right. And I'm trying. I really am. And if I don't know something, I should call me out. If you ever hear me saying something like I know with overconfidence or certainty, but at the end of the day, I do want to treat all of this literature like any other literature that I'm reading. I'm not reading this you know, the same way Christians have read this, right? They have a favored uh, perception of this particular literature. So University of Myth Vision. It is MVP courses. Um, that is the website. So mvp-courses.com. It's probably too small for you to see, but we're about to have, let's see. Can I see where the upcoming scholars are? My wife's the one who uh, made this beautiful website. Where are they? 
start that's affiliate program i'm i'm looking through the website like i don't even know where i'm at about us our mission our values okay meet the scholars so we've got some kip davis is coming that's coming soon you don't want to miss the hebrew bible stuff dead sea scroll scholar talking about let me just tease you he uses scenes from the game of thrones the walking dead amazing scenes that you're just like what and and he's gonna he's gonna hit you uh hard with some stuff about ancient israelite religion uh m david litwa dr tabors tomorrow dennis mcdonald richard carrier jay bundy two-time phd on uh, evolution everybody knows richard carrier uh, Richard C. Miller, like we've got a lot of stuff coming, a lot of stuff, and uh, we, we got to add to this. So I don't know if my Robin should be up here somewhere, but uh, we're also planning on other stuff too. So I wanted to come show you some loves. I wanted to come and show you some loves. That's what I'm doing here. Good build, bro. Thank you. Uh, when the Bulls play with the thunderstorm the snakes will come out and play in the field with the christians oh what a merry way <laughs> may apollonia satana bless thee and keep thee <laughs> shalom good to see you pat oh come on derek you know it's an infallible text absent any errors or contradictions oh ye of little faith you caught me pat you caught me you caught me my friend none good to see you Captain Dadpool in the house. Good to see you. I'm not super late this time. That's true. We just started, but we're not sticking around long. So I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I'm running off to a wrestling match in just a moment. I'm literally giving everyone a last chance before the final apocalypse comes in to sign up for the course. Tomorrow, we're doing Q&A. We're doing Q&A, and we're going to hit James Tabor hard with this Gospel of Mark course. Because I know anyone who took it, there, there's got to be questions that you have. Again, back to showing you the course. You own it for life. You can have friends over, have, you know, sit around and, and let them check it out and learn. It's in super high quality. How do I make this full screen? Let's see. I don't want to unmute it because it's it's going to be all sound and funny because it's not through my computer. But I mean, it's it's a good, it's a good course. Anywho. Back over here to y'all real quick. Catching up, catching up. Nerdy Rodent in the house. Good to see you, Nerdy Rodent. Myth Vision Podcast, just don't talk politics. Keep it to religion. I do. I do keep it to religion. Sometimes things might line up with political ideas, but ethically, you know, I am I am trying to help make the world a better place. But yeah, I do, I do my best to try and avoid getting political, even though there's some things that they, they cross over to that boundary just humans who deserve the right to be who they are those are things where i have no choice but to to intercede my own thoughts along the way and that will happen so please uh you know respect that of course um seth high wrestling child jiu-jitsu jiu-jitsu guy renzo gracie gracie was awesome historically i did a little brazilian jiu-jitsu um when i was growing up and some other I did Taekwondo and a little bit of karate and then I wrestled in high school and my son's doing wrestling now. So we're about to go to that life on the mats in a microcosm of life. <laughs> oh, wow. I've been going through uh, Dr. Tabor's lecture series. It is very good. Looking forward to the zoom meeting tomorrow. Thank you. Captain Dadpool is um, a good example to follow here. I'm, I'm serious though. You had a wonderful conversation the other night and I love that you're putting yourself out there to have these conversations with others, including Christians. And I hope people will go subscribe to your channel, man. You're underrated. You deserve more attention on the YouTube side, on the TikTok side. I'm underrated. I don't have anything compared to you in terms of following, but keep up the work, man. I always appreciate you. And you're on a journey just like me trying to understand and know what the facts seem to imply. And I appreciate about you. I really do. For the webmaster, add the Myth Vision uh, Favicon to the site instead of the host gator alligator. I don't know what that is. Melody says, respect. He and John Donaher were my coaches. Oh, wow. So you had OGs. You had the OG. Wow, Seth. Um, that's awesome. That really is. My dad was a huge fan of the Gracie camp and 
you know, we did close quarter combat training. My dad was special forces and stuff. So we always, uh, you know, would be into this stuff. And he taught us as young kids. Mark is the sound of a hair-lipped dog. <laughs> Thank you, Shadman. I appreciate you. I'm the legend. Uh, what do you mean? Don't talk about politics. Christians have made the religion political fair game. Myth vision. Uh, MAGA is a cult. I definitely see some some definite characteristics. And I would say a lot of people in, in that uh, avenue are there. But yeah, there is overlap no matter where you go that comes. But making it like my center focus is not politics at all on this channel, as you well know. But there's some stuff that you, if you can't use like what happens with the MAGA movement and show characteristics of it being cultic, then I don't know. I mean, that's just not fair to not be able to point that out. I think that's a little bit obvious to me. Uh, so yeah, I, I have a scholar that I want to talk to about that. He wrote a book on this actually. Um, I just need to get up with him at some point, but I want it to be like equated to religion and how movements are. So I am very overrated on TikTok. <laughs> you have a, a pretty vast following over there. Facts? Just joking. Plato means fat belly. Plato was a wrestler. I didn't know that. Lauren, good to see you in the chat, Lauren. And of course, thank you, Nun, for showing up. And Iron Charioteer and Black Line Supreme in the hizzy. Speak on any issues you like, Derek. And remember, we are Myth Vision. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's never going away. I don't care how cheesy and corny it is. That will always be the motto. So we got to get used to it, right? We just got to get used to it. Derek, I think you put Christianity in the ICU. I hope I put fundamentalist Christianity in the ICU. And I want to give breathing room for those who find it somehow comforting, traditional, whatever. But the ones who want to tell you, who want to do what I used to do, those are the ones I'm trying to change their minds. I do want them to see and uh, a lot of the more liberal approached Christians will say, why are you, why did you go all the way there? If, if just stay tuned, stay tuned over the next day, I'm going to launch a video. I just did a presentation on uh, GCRR an atheism conference, literally 30 minutes ago. I edited a, a presentation and my wife said, you need to call it shadows on the wall. You need to call it shadows on the wall. And I'm going to show you this video in the next day or two. And I hope everybody watches it and shares it, shares it out because I put my heart into this and, and like there's some serious editing involved. And I think it's a really, really good video that will let people see into what happened with me and uh, my escaping the cave or exiting the cave. And I use Plato's analogy for my own life story. So be tuned, be staying tuned. I hope that you like it too. And, and let me know what you think. Paul says, I are some myth vision too. Uh, Mark and Jesus were both following the script of the felled one in Daniel nine. It explains why he didn't need a resurrection story. Jesus had to de delay Jerusalem until that window of time opened. Hmm. Jesus healed the sick, raised the dead. Most importantly, turned water into wine. Who would be crazy enough to kill a man that can do these things? Doesn't add up. Interesting point. I think Apollonius Satayana did the same thing too, and they, they wanted to try and kill him. Uh, do you think religions can be pre, uh, prescient in the mundane way that sci-fi? Hold on. Do you mean present in the mundane way? Hold on. I don't know that word. Let me look up that word here. Prescient. Might be using big old words on me, buddy. Let's see. Having or, or showing knowledge of events before they take place. That's... I don't think you meant to write that then, right? Smack dab? Trying to get you right here. Do you think religions can be... Because the idea that having knowledge before they take place. I don't uh, I don't get the question on that, if that's what you mean. If you mean present in the same way that sci-fi sometimes is, I'm not, not sure I understand the, the statement. Shadows on the wall, reference to Plato and the cave, I assume. Absolutely. And I think that I put some depth into it, you know. When was America great, Derek? <laughs> yeah, good point. Especially when, you, I mean, there's we were strong as a nation in many places, but there are things about it, right? Like, who was it great to? 
And uh, how great was it for everyone? I would say that uh, not everybody had it great. So, prescient, prescient, my pronunciation. See, I have you here to help me, Iron. Epictetus is the goat in my book. If you keep striking me, my leg will break. Now look, my leg is broken. Stoic level max. <laughs> he means does it sometimes predict the future? I wouldn't say actually it's predicting the future. I would say maybe there are patterns in which people can observe. Like I can predict that there will be another war in the future. Oh, and famine. Oh, and sickness. Oh, and earthquake. Oh, and volcano. Oh, and tornado. Oh, and it doesn't take much to do that. You know what I mean? As far as predicting and on some other grand scale, like, no, we humans are pattern seeking creatures. And it's pretty simple to make some of these assumptions based on the track record. In fact, I tell loved ones all the time that are in active addiction when they relapse and they get upset before they confess that they have been in that uh, state of mind where I'm like, hey, things are adding up. And they're like, why are you thinking that? Because nine times out of 10, this is what you do before you relapse and I want to help you. And uh, then once they relapse and they come out, they're like, you were right. I know because I've seen the writing on the wall many times. Did they have spiritual resurrection idea? I would imagine maybe there was some type of resurrection in some allegorical sense that could be understood in by some of them. That's the idea both John Dominic Crossan and uh, Richard C. Miller thinks the early church kind of held to. Not a literal historical Jesus actually rose using historical argumentation. No. Be the same thing they thought of the apotheosis of Caesar's or Romulus's ascension, the whole nine. Captain Deadpool, if you follow the teachings as Jesus as a moral guideline, I will support you. But as soon as you claim that Jesus gives you authority to perpetrate your bigotry, then we will have a problem. Well said. The Odyssey comparing is a really interesting topic. Without a doubt, the Odyssey, the Iliad, Virgil, Dionys uh, Euripides, Bacchae, this book is unfreaking believable. I'm blown away. Hold on, Craig and Ford's in the chat? Someone said Craig and Ford, fantastic as he delves into prehistory and compare. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I thought he was in the chat. Yeah. I love, uh, I love what he does. John's a great dude. The play sometimes throws long and short range passes, which change the movement. What if Jesus was a myth visionist? And that's why he got <laughs> Mike. Is there a guest? Or are we having a private date with Derek T? Get ready. Um, now you're just chatting with me for one second. I literally have to go. Uh, my wife's literally going to kill me. If I don't, uh, I love you all. Please take the time. Please sign up tomorrow is like, it's cut off right tomorrow for the Q and a. Now I hope you will all be there. I am going to be there with James Tabor hosting it. And, uh, you can go blast through these courses so you can be prepared for tomorrow's, um, live Q and a asking James, whatever questions we want to do the website here, the main website, but this is what you'll get. The landing page will look like this which is pinned at the top, of the top of the chat. Go sign up and you will get notified with an email with the Zoom link to join us live. I hope to see everybody there. Because the cutoff and the apocalypse is nigh, I must do an apocalyptic outro. Hit the like button. I love you all. Seriously, thank you for being such a great community and being great people, just following on the journey with different ideas along the way. But being patient with me and uh, never forget, we are Myth Vision. Root my son on the wrestling match and let me know. Uh, ask me next time if you won or not.